Hi, gems. Listen, tonight we're going to talk about the relationships and situationships, but we're going to do something kind of different tonight. You know what we're going to do? We're going to have a special guest, and we also, I'm going to read this poem to y'all as my night of this relationship and situationship, okay? So listen, this is a solid word for you. And I want people to come up and explain either some of your scenarios or some of your situations that you was in and how did you leave, okay? So here we go. Don't just move on from the people that hurt you. Move on from the version of you that gave people power over you. Now, that's a very powerful statement. Like, if we have the courage to leave, hi, Evangelist, hi, Tiffany, hi, Kiki. Um, if we have the courage to leave, we got to not go in our next relationship or situationship as the same version of the person we was that left. We got to identify our own mistakes, okay? So, if you had a man who cheated on you and you felt like you did everything right, just go down your checklist again and check yourself. That's what you do. You try to find out what could have led that behavior. And then you evaluate yourself, rejuvenate yourself, and then get back out there and start dating. Just remember your three dating with your, your three dates. Your three dates should be your most important first three dates ever. On the last date, be sure to ask, how do you treat your mom? So, and then how did his relationship end? You got to get to know the people that you're going to potentially do soul tides with. So without further ado, we're going to invite Candy Washington. I don't know if she's in here yet. Um, Karen Frazier, we got some new members tonight. Karen Frazier, thank you for becoming. Oh, Karen Frazier, thank you for the super chat. Um, we also had some new members on here tonight, and I don't see it. Let me see. Let me see. Um, new members. Let's see. I can't see it. Nisi, can you please come up and read out the um, um, the new members? And Candy, the link has been dropped for you. So come on in. Come on in. We had some new members tonight, so I got to go back and see who our new members were. And to remind you to go on to Candy Washington's page and check her out when she's talking about self-care and relationships. Nisi thank you, Cynthia Gaston. And thank you, Sherry Martin, for um, becoming new members. And we're going to have our, our first members um, live coming up on Saturday. So make sure y'all are there and be in your PJs or your gym shirts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nisi. And now we have Candy Washington coming through. Hi, Candy. Hey, Marcella. How are you? You know, I was so happy to see you um, talk about um, self-care with relationships. Yes. And the one that really sparked me was the one last night um, when you had to go through your thing and how did you get over it? So could you tell mm -hmm. the gems and the candy canes and candy feel welcome to stream this onto your page if you like. Okay. Yes. I don't know how to do it now, but I'm going to take it and, and put it on my page. Okay. <laughs> I hope you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about um, my relationship issue and how I learned to get over the feeling of rejection and learning how to uh, redefine what that meant for me. So right before the pandemic started, I met this guy who I thought was really wonderful, really great. We had this good relationship. Um, it got really serious very quickly. The pandemic hit. I had to go back home, but we stayed together. But there were all of these red flags that as an intelligent woman, I still chose to ignore. One being, first he told me he had been separated for two years. That turned out not to be true. Turned out he had just gotten separated maybe for the last two months. Not living with his 
saying separated wife, but um, they had their own places, obviously. Um, but I started dating him under the impression that he had already been separated. Um, it was just a legality thing, all of these things. She's doing her, he's doing him. So not like a side chick, not like a mistress or anything like that. But then it turned out that he had actually started dating me before he even told his parents or his friends that him and his wife were going to get divorced. So that brought up a lot of issues with us. The issue of meeting the family, meeting the friends, him meeting my family, him meeting my friends. So normal things that you milestones in relationships that I wanted to have with him, I kept getting pushback. And he would love by me. Oh, no, you're amazing. You're great. I'm all in the blah, 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 blah. I'm just not in a place right now. It's really hard for me. That's not my blah, 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 all of that stuff. Right. And so even though the reality of the situation is that it really was his stuff. When someone is not treating you in the way that you deserve, when someone is not showing up for you, the way you show up for them and you feel like they're hiding you, that automatically erodes your self-esteem and your sense of self. So even though he's telling me all of this stuff, what I think and what I internalize is, is he embarrassed of me? Is he ashamed of me? Does he not take me seriously? It's just, just physical and I'm, getting, and I'm being set up for the okie doke. Um, what is it about me that's not good enough for him to profess and proclaim. Like when it's just us, we have this beautiful relationship, but it only really exists in the confines of just us. When I know that in my heart, I want a public, I want a real, I want a Instagram, really not like a fake Instagram relationship, but I want my boyfriend to post me and to tag me and to have it and to like meet his friends and to do all that stuff. And I was denying myself in order to keep him. And when I got to the point where I knew that I had to honor what I needed, honor what I wanted and remember who I was rather than catering to who he was saying he was, I had to get out. And I also had to remind myself, watch what people do, not what they say. If you are so all in, if I am so beautiful and great and amazing and all of these things, and you've never felt this way before, and you're not currently with your wife, and I'm not some side person, then there really should be no issue in blending of, the, of us all coming together. What's the real problem? What's the real issue? And that is what we kept bumping up against. Where in my gut, I felt something was off. But because I really liked him, because he got along so well, he was so great in every all these other areas. He would love bomb, give the gifts, all this stuff. I denied my intuition. And that was eroding away at me. And so I finally just had to let him go <laughs> and break up with him and just try and let that be. But like any guy, he tried to come back hot and cold, right? They always try and uh, they'll let you be for like a month, couple weeks. Then they hit you up in the DM. Then they start liking your photos. Then they start texting you. But that's called breadcrumbing. They give you little pieces for a couple of reasons. One, they give you little pieces to see if you are still stuck on stupid. <laughs> and we'll just take those little crumbs and take whatever little morsel they want to give you. Oh, I'm not going to give you the whole entree. I'm going to give you those little crumbs just to keep you coming back. Right? To see if they can get back with you. So they really give in these, these breadcrumbs to, to see if you're stuck on stupid. And then they also give you the breadcrumbs because they're not making you a priority, but they want to keep you as an option. Well, so they, he, oh, go ahead. When he, before he gave you the breadcrumbs, was you, right. did you go through all the pain of missing him? And Oh, yes, 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 yes. I went through all of the pain of a breakup. It, 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 and honestly, it's, it's synonymous to me to the grieving process. 
because it really is a death. It's a loss of what you thought something would be. Mm. Like this was a guy that I really saw myself with. Like, I really saw myself building with him. I saw myself being with him. I thought this would be, like, long-term, serious, you know, relationship. And mm -hmm. when I had, when I stopped living in the fantasy of what we could be, and I started living in the reality of what we actually were, I had to grieve that. I had to grieve it. So there was bargaining like, well, you know what? Maybe it's really not that big of a deal about meeting his friends. Like he is, you know, going through a divorce. Maybe I should wait a little bit longer. Maybe I broke up with him too quickly. Maybe I'm being too hard, right? You, you start to like bargain and you start I to second you. guess yeah. all of that. You, yeah, you know, maybe I did overreact or, but he's so great in all these other areas and oh, I have to meet somebody new, and but we know each other so well and da, 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 da. You start to bargain, you start to second guess. And then I definitely went through anger, pissed off, pissed off at him, pissed off at myself, pissed off at all of this stuff, right? Definitely went through the anger phase. What else is there? Um, also went through like denial, like, oh no, like, um, again, a part of the de denial is like, well, maybe it really wasn't that bad. Maybe it really wasn't. And then also I went through the, de the denial part of, well, I never really liked him anyway. Like I knew all the red flags. Like I really wasn't into him that much anyway. And that was a way to protect myself from feeling the hurt, denying how much it did hurt and denying how much I did really like him. Um, so I went through all of those phases of, of grief until I got to um, acceptance of, you know what? He is where he is. He is who he is. And I am who I am. And the biggest piece for me was the self-worth piece. That just because he wasn't in a place to show me my worth doesn't mean that I'm worthless. Right. Because I think sometimes when a guy will tell you, I'm not ready for a relationship, what we hear is you're not good enough to be in a relationship with. We internalize where they are in their life and we make it about us not being worthy or good enough. And that's what I was doing. So when he was saying, oh, I'm not in a place, he, like, I really like you, I want to be with you, but I'm just not in a place. Because he was coming out of, he's older than me, so he was coming out of a 15-year marriage. Um, so he was saying, oh, I'm, I, he's like, I really like you, I want to be with you, but I'm not in a place. But what I'm hearing is, oh, I like you, but I don't like you enough. So you were a rebound. Right. That's what you felt like. And then also somebody coming out of marriage that long don't want to get married right away. Right. Exactly. And I felt like, and that's the thing, like my rational mind understood this. He's coming out of a 15-year marriage. He probably still wants to play the field. He probably wants to hoe a bit because he hasn't been, like he was, not to his credit, because that's what you should do, but he was faithful um, to his wife. That's what you should do. Not that you're getting brownie points for that, but I'm sure part of him, he got married really young. Um, so I'm sure he wanted to go out there and hoe a bit, to be perfectly honest. I don't think he wanted to go from 15 years of marriage to another super serious relationship. Right. So I can understand that. Rationally, I get that. I understand that. Do you, boo-boo. But emotionally... When I'm being intimate with someone, physically, mentally, spiritually, we, we talked about all of that stuff. Sure, I understand, understand something rationally, but emotionally, I'm just like, oh, no, I'm not with the bullshit. Like, why can't you? And of course, I make it about me. Well, why can't you just be ready for me? Right. <laughs> you know, why can't you just step up for me? So and so where is he now? Where is he now? Oh, let me tell you what the latest that has happened. <laughs> the latest. <laughs> let me tell you the latest that has happened. Okay. So we broke up and this was around, it took us about two months to break up because we'd get together, break up, get together, break up. So that was around like December, January of uh, this year, earlier this year. And so the bread coming hasn't stopped from January to today. There was like all of these different bread comes, right? Popping in, popping out, popping in, popping out. And mind you, when he's breadcrumbing, he's still talking like we're in a relationship. Hey, lovely. Hey, baby. I'll show you around, blah, 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 blah. But we haven't seen each other. I don't want to see him. I'm not feeding into it, right? Okay. Right. So a couple weeks ago, 
he starts reaching out more, being much more want to reach out. He wants to talk. Can we talk about, oh, I want you, I want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions. If you felt I've been being hot and cold, blah, 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 blah. And at this point, I've been doing the work on myself. And when I mean work on myself, I'll break it down. I mean, I go to therapy. I mean that I have uh, positive self-affirmations. I have um, a relationship with God um, and I pray. I journal. I walk in nature. I meditate. I do a lot of self-love meditations because I think the biggest thing about relationships is that your partner is really just a mirror for you. They mirror back what you feel about you, what you think about you. And your partner can actually be the, your, your, your best teacher. They show you what in you still needs to be healed and worked on. So, and then, so once you realize that every relationship you have, whether it's your, with your family, friends, coworkers, or romantic person is rooted in the relationship that you have with yourself. So working on yourself is the best thing. And I, and also intentionality matters. I don't work on myself to be good enough for him. I work on myself because I am worthy and deserving of my own love. Right. That is why I work on myself. So we're not working on ourselves to get to a big good place to like attract a man or to be good enough for a man. No, that that's gravy. We work on ourselves because we are worthy and deserving of our own love that we so freely give to other people, but we forget to give it to ourselves. Yeah. You have to love yourself first and the most. Have you cut him off permanently? Now I have. Yes. So are you still accepting the gifts in the breadcrumbing phase. So there were moments of weakness in the breadcrumbing phase. I have, <laughs> definitely a human. I am not perfect. Um, but I did, but I did, um, stand my ground. And one thing that I was really proud of, I did not succumb to any, um, post breakup late night calls or anything like that. I made sure to keep my cookie in the cookie jar. Good. I made sure to do that. And then he tried to come back, um, not this week, but last week. And, I'm a, a very intuitive person and I really listen to what people say Correct. and the words that they use. And so he said to me, oh, you know, like women have said that I am not real, that sometimes I'm not real or transparent. So I wanted to talk to you if you had any questions about that. And so I said, you said women? He didn't say you. He said women. So then I said to him, are you in a relationship? Because to me, that was a red flag that he was referring to multiple women, not our particular relationship. Right. So I caught him in that and he was just like, oh, well, she's not my official girlfriend, non-official, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this is where I'm going to get to the point where your romantic person is will shine a light on where you need to heal. So i said to myself, I could either swallow this and not ask the difficult questions and just pretend like it's cool, or I can know that no matter what his actions or choices are, I am still worthy and deserving and amazing and all of those great things. And that my worth is not contingent upon this man's actions. So I asked the difficult question, did you ever introduce this non-official girlfriend to your friends? Because that was the core reason why we broke up, right? Skirted around. He has, he has yet to say yes. He also has yet to say no. He did. So that exactly. So I was just like, so you did, but I was wrong about you, right? Because he's like, you're so wrong, blah, 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 and all this stuff. Never 100% confirmed it, but that to me is a confirmation. That is a confirmation. So he did. So then the next day he's texting, oh, you know, like, 
um, I want to see you, blah, 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 blah. You can meet my friends. I wasn't trying to hide you before. I was just, it was just a bad time. But like, so like now all of a sudden I'm welcome to meet his friends. Of course I can meet his friends. Come and meet his friends. But when it actually mattered to me, that was the one thing you used over me. Right. So now that I've healed and I've done the work, I have some space, I now have objective perspective on it. So now I can look back and say, oh, you know what? He wasn't actually ashamed of you or hiding you. You weren't a side piece. He right. knew that that was the one thing that he could control you with. Yes. It, had no, it was nothing to do with actually meeting the friends. It was that he knew that it mattered to me. And he knew that was one way to control and manipulate the situation. Because all of a sudden now, oh, sure, you can meet my friends. No big deal. You're welcome to him. No problem. Oh, now it's no problem. And so... But I'm but what I can take from that is again, these relationships can be your best teachers because it wasn't so much about him. What that experience was showing me was where I still needed to grow, where the areas that I still needed to love myself more and have more self-worth and to have uh, healthier communications and more and higher standards and implement my boundaries. Because yeah. the only reason why I was triggered by him um, not initiating meeting the friends was because there was a part of my belief system that there yeah. was something about me that wasn't good enough to be with him or wasn't good enough to be sh like shown publicly or whatever it was. That's my own stuff. Clearly rooted from like childhood things, right? That's where we, yeah. that's where all these buttons get programmed is like in our childhood, right? right. Um, and so I had to go back, see what was the experience in my childhood to lead me to believe that I wasn't good enough to be claimed in that sense. And so I had to go back and work on myself. So I think you know, we, we talk about beauty for ashes. When you go through yeah. these really traumatic experiences, because breakups are traumatic. They are painful yeah. and they hurt and they suck. They really do. And it's a disappointment. And, it, and you do have to grieve it because it is a loss. But if you can look at it and say, what is this experience here to show me about me? What is right. this experience here to take how I feel about me to the next level, my life to the next dimension. Because even though it sucked, I'm grateful I went through it because yes. where I stand now, can't nobody ever tell me what I am worth and what I'm not worth. And no one's opinion of me will make me change how I feel about me. And oh, when right. I see those red flags, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm I'm not going to live in denial. I'm not going to join him on Fantasy Island. I'm getting the hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question for you. It's okay. from T Tiffany James. She said, I heard you say that you had a vision board before. Mm -hmm. Did you or will you do for relationships? Just asking. Yes, that is a great question. So when I started doing um, vision boards, I do couple of them. I do one for my big universal goals, right? So it's like sell a script, uh, develop this, get this, da -da 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 -da, you know, get my divine dream home or whatever it is, those big marriage, the, the big goals is like my universal one. And I make them two ways. I make them digitally. So I can, so then I, so then I can make it the back of my, like my laptop. Once mm. I close out everything, my vision board is the back of it. On my phone, my vision board is the screen because I want to see it every day. I printed it out. I'm looking at it right now. I printed it out so I see it, your vision, because you, you want to make sure you're getting in your subconscious mind. What you see in your mind, you can hold in your hand. So it's really powerful to have that vision reinforced. Enforcement. So that's one I use for universal. And then I use one for like three to six months. This is what I want to manifest. These are the goals I want to get. So they might be like the smaller goals, but I'll put them on the vision board. And then yes, I have done one for um, romantic partner. 
And I, and what I did was I wrote a list out of all of my insecurities, you know, not being claimed, duh, 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 whatever it is, wrote all those out. And then I thought, what is the equal opposite of that? And then I'm going to go even you know, bigger. So like professing my, his love, you know, showing me off, being the prize, being the arm candy, you know, whatever it is. And then I also put down his attributes, um, career, mentally and physically. Like, don't forget that part. Chemistry yeah. matters. If you want a hot man, you get yourself a hot man who is also kind and generous. You know, yeah. sometimes we think it has to be one or the other. But you can have both. Or sometimes a guy may not look physically attractive, but his spirit makes him the bomb. So you just never know. But write it all down. Write everything you, you like down and then put visuals next to it. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's what I do now. And I also want to say if I had not done the work of – talking to a therapist, of talking to friends and family that I trust, of working on my self-esteem, on working on my self-concept, on meditating, on, on talking to God, on all of those things, on getting um, very uncomfortable, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable with my own insecurities, of being right. able to look myself in the mirror and be like, what is it? that I believe about myself that is not serving the highest version of me and not right. thinking that it means that there's something wrong with me. I'm not judging myself. I'm not criticizing myself. It's not my fault. If somebody disrespects you, it's not your fault. It's just a way to empower yourself. It's just a way to get the tools that you need to get a different result in your life. That's all it is. It's a, if you caused it, that means you can change it. So it's not about judging yourself. It's about empowering yourself with these things, right? But right. if I had not done the work, because all of these relationships are just tests, right? I yes. don't think I would have passed this last test with him. If I hadn't done the work, I would have still been that girl that so needed his validation. And so when and he you know, came back, oh, go ahead, Marcella with the breadcrumbs being dropped, that was yep. your test. Because yep. then one day you had to turn down the breadcrumbs, but you would only do it when your inner self saying, no, I don't want the flowers. Yep. I don't want the candy. You had to keep doing that breadcrumb because you had to stop when you were ready to stop. Ex think, Marcella, that is an Excellent, excellent point, because it's really not about the other person. It is always about you. So when I got to the place of my own internal healing, that's when I got to the place where I was just like, no more, not good enough, not enough. I'm good, homie. And, yeah. and your opinion, your actions, what you say and or do no longer dictates how I feel about me. When you are the authority on you, that is when you truly become powerful and unstoppable. When you are the authority on you. On you. On you. No one can tell you something about yourself that is not you. Right. You no longer answer to disrespect. You no right. longer let somebody's opinion make you feel bad about you. Correct. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. And <laughs> okay, and they can keep it. I sure you do. know everybody's got one, but and I your opinion has no bearing on who I am. Right, and that's why I tell all my gems to please practice on loving yourself. Meditate, yes. read your Bible, self affirmations. That is important. So when a man comes into your life, he can't tell you you're pretty. You already <laughs> know you mm -hmm. You just say thank you. But you don't let nobody come in and tell you something that you don't believe about your own self. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got another question. I mean, another statement. And her yeah. name is Teddy. And she said, Candy, I wouldn't de even deal with a man who's been in a long-term relationship. And it is now free. Wait a minute. She said, I wouldn't even deal with a relationship with a man who's been in a long-term relationship and is now free. He's free, but he's not available. He's all about sex with, without strings. You need someone with your goals. Now, mm -hmm. when you were 
Did you have breakup sex? No, I did not let him. Okay. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. No, we only ever um, were physically intimate in the confines of our actual relationship. Okay. That's and like good. in this last time, he was like, can I call you an Uber? I just want you to come and sleep next to me. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I was like, no, don't contact me. I'm good. Um, and, and, and I want to say to, the, to what that person said, I understand that's how it sounds and that how it looks, but I also want to be very clear that a part of healing is being able to look at a person who, even though they may have hurt you, you can still have compassion for the for their humanity. So I'm talking about my relationship with him and I'm highlighting all of the bad stuff because that's the stuff I had to heal and that stuff I had to get over. Mm -hmm. But he's actually a good person and he's a decent person but he's also a person. He's a human yeah. being. He had his own stuff, his own baggage, his own wounds, the, his own journey, his own healing that he has to go through. So even though he did some shady stuff, I'm not going to I'm not going to villainize him. Because I also chose to participate in that. I have to take accountability for the choices that I made. So I'm not going to just make him the bad guy and I'm some victim because I'm nobody's victim. Sure, right. I was hurt. Sure, uh, we broke up. But you know what? That's also life. People get hurt. People break up. People make up. So I don't want to make it sound like I hate him or I think he's a villain. I don't hate him. I'm not going to let him disrespect me by not giving me what I need and deserve, but I don't hate him. I don't think he's evil. I don't think he's bad. I just think he's a person who also needs to do his own self work. And I do think, and we did have something very real. Yeah, and, Nisi, and, oh, take go these ahead. bots out. Nisi, take these bots. They're coming. Ooh. Nisi, take the bots. Mods, get those... Um, Thank you. All right. Okay. okay. Um, because again, a part of it is not judging or criticizing or putting yourself in victim space. The whole point of it is putting yourself in a place of empowerment and accountability. Mm -hmm. When I'm accountable for me, that's when I'm at my highest self. That's when I'm the most empowered. So sure, he, we know, love bombs at this and that. And what we had was real. And that's another thing that happens when you break up. You, you question it. You're like, was it all yeah. fake? Was he just using me for sex? Was he lying the whole time? Um, obviously, every situation is different. But but no, I don't I don't inherently believe that. We were two yeah. people who deeply cared about each other. The timing wasn't exactly right or correct. You know, where we were in our what lives. About, I, mm -hmm. What about your now? Are you afraid to date? Are you just taking time? Are are you just going out on like cocktail dates and stuff like that? Ooh, okay. I actually went on a date last night. <laughs> so me now, I am back dating safely. So only doing outdoors, making sure that they are vac vaccinated, um, not doing anything physical because there's still COVID and Delta. So taking care of myself um, physically from a health standpoint, but also taking care of myself mentally and spiritually by talking to guys and going out and remembering how desirable I am and how sexy I am and just having fun and just stepping into my femininity again and realizing right. that I can't get wrapped up in one person. Take the time, take the beat to heal and, and to work on yourself, but don't hibernate. Don't, you know, don't give up on love. You know, a yeah. part of life is having your heart broken sometimes. Like if you've never had your heart broken, then you've never really lived. That is a part of life. And I believe in really experiencing the full spectrum of, of the human experience. Love, loss, anger, joy, all of those things, you know? So it's, it's like if you've never had your heart broken, go out there and love wildly and fearlessly. And the thing is you are resilient. You will bounce back. It will not break you. You're stronger than you think you are. And you will have, if you keep listening to Marcella, you will have the tools to take care of yourself. 
Yes. So that's another thing. When you go through a breakup, in, if you're scared to feel the feelings or if you're scared to love because you're fearful of being hurt, then get your toolbox up. Get your self-care plan. And, and, you know, it's like when when he and I broke up and I was like obviously hurting and heartbroken, and upset, even though I was hurting, I knew I had the tools to take care of myself. Yeah. I knew that I could reach out to my friends and family. I knew I could. Oh, of course I cried. <laughs> I'm, I, I believe in a good cry. Yeah, of course I cried. I even cried this last time. Um, just because it's still, it, it, you can work on yourself and you can be healed, but that doesn't mean that you still don't get triggered and things don't get activated. Wounds don't get touched upon again. So yeah, I cried when it's like he introduced this non-girlfriend to his friends. And that was like the one thing that I wanted, but I, but I also had the awareness to know that I needed that experience on my personal journey to know that I had healed that part in myself. So yes, it activated me. Yes, it pissed me off. Yes, it hurt me. But that, I, but I also had the awareness to know that that had nothing to do with my worth. That my let me tell you how he told you about this non girlfriend. Yeah, he, he he told you that for you to become jealous and yep. be in some sort of invisible competition. That is why he told you. He wanted you to feel jealous and then cave in mm-hmm. and you'll be back in the situation. And then he would go back to that non-girl. Men <laughs> only tell you in depth about past things because they want you to feel jealous and be in some sort of competition. And that's what I was talking about this afternoon about Kai. When Darian was telling Kai uh, uh, Alexa, everything about Kai and Kai, everything about Alexa. He wanted these two women to comp- compete for him without fighting. And they did uh, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what, Marcella? You are a thousand percent correct. I think he did it because he did want me to to get into competition or to be jealous. And I also think he was testing me to see if I still cared. Cause he was like, Oh, why do you, he was like, Oh, like, well, what, like, what do you care? Like, why do you care? And he kept like dancing around the, the question, never really answered it. And then when he realized I was upset and not buying into it, he was like, well, can you just come over? Can I get you an Uber? I just, can you just like sleep next to me? Like, I'm so sorry. Well, if you want to meet my friends, you can meet my friends. You're welcome to all of my friends. Like it just flipped like that. So a, I don't know if this non-girlfriend exists. She could have been a figment to test me. B, if she does exist, whatever. (laughs) I feel bad for her, to be perfectly honest, because I'm not the, this is one thing that I do pride myself in. I'm not the type of woman that blames a woman. So if he comes to me and say this non-girlfriend is real, say she really does exist, I don't blame her. I have no issue with her. I have no beef with her. I feel yeah. I feel a sisterhood to her because I'm like, well, this whole time he was with you, he was breadcrumbing me. And if I had at any point said yes, he would have been over. But yet he's but yet he's in your face saying whatever yeah. he's saying to you. So he was disrespecting both of us. Well, I want to tell you, Miss Joanna um, mm-hmm. Morris said most of us have been there. Those are the teachable moments. Exactly. Miss um, Easley said I was thinking the same thing, Marcella, because the more she entertains him, the longer she will be in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie said he sounded like he had a woman. Um, he had a woman the whole time. No. Um, Tiffany James said. Um, that 3522 reading road messy. Now people ask Mm -hmm. you, Candy, if you had a self-help kit, what would be in it? Oh, okay. If I had a self-help kit, definitely a journal. Journaling is super powerful because it allows you to get what you are thinking or feeling in your mind or subconsciously that sometimes we don't know how to verbalize or even understand intellectually out. And you don't have to be a good writer. You don't have to write a dissertation. You just sit down, open up your journal, get your pen or your, or your pencil and let it flow. How am I feeling today? What what came up for me about this? And just let it flow better out than in. Just get it 
out. I also love a thing called scripting. So scripting is when you write in the present tense what you want to manifest in your life. So I love scripting. Like in like if say for example I have a goal for 3 years from now or a year from now or 10 years from now, I write it like in the present tense. Like I'm so happy and grateful that I just bought my second home and blah, 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 blah. And it looks so great. And I love picking out the pool or da, 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 da. So I also use my journal for scripting. So I write out my feelings on one side and then I also script. It's a very powerful tool that I use. So definitely a journal. Um, shout out to Marcella, the Bible, the Bible. I mean, I, I'm not speaking to anyone's personal religion, but I a thousand percent believe in spirituality. And the way that I define spirituality is just what is your relationship to God or a, how or, or a higher power, the divinity that lives in you, but also the internal infinite divinity as well. What is your relationship to something that lives in you, but is greater than you and, and not thinking, you know, like to me, I think God is my strength. Like when I don't know what to do, when I feel bad or whatever it is, I get my strength from God. God's grace is sufficient. And I yes. always think that God's grace is sufficient and it will get you through. It will get you through just knowing that his presence is with you, just knowing that he's always with you and more than with you, God is for you. He is for you. And when you have, like, I feel like warm in my heart, just like thinking about it now. It's just a comfort. It, it really is. It's just a comfort. And we when you talk get, about. Get the troll okay. again. Can we get oh, no. out of here? Get the troll out of there. Yep. So journal, um, Bible, and then um, I'm not sure if it would go into a certain kit, but have your off. Uh, at home spas or you're at home, whatever you want to do, do a face mask, do um, an eye mask or, you know, soak in Epsom salt bubble bath. Um, you know, just do things, do your nails, put, you know, essential oils over your body. Take the time to reconnect to your body. Take the time to take care of yourself. You know, like how, like how, how often do we just pop in a shower, pop out, pop here, pop there but you don't take the time to slow down, connect to yourself, smell the lotion you're putting on, see what your skin feels like, put on some music and just relax and chill. Take the time to connect back to your body. So I would have that, some type of uh, book or something to read in there, um, a cell phone or a, a computer, call your friends, call your family. But make sure the people that you reach out to are safe people. Just because they're family does not mean they're safe. Just because yeah. they look you in the face and say they're your friend doesn't mean they're safe. Have the discernment to know who in your life can you actually trust your authentic and vulnerable self to. Because the last thing you want to do is show up vulnerable and in, and in a very, uh, you know, vulnerable position and have someone that you're looking to for support do more damage than good. I'm going to read some of the suggestions they have. They okay. have toys, a <laughs> candle for sure. Yes. Drinking Sharon says music. Mm -hmm. um, self help, love. Um, somebody self, self, um, self first, love you first, then attract others. But in my self help kit mm -hmm. that I have for myself, you guys, I have Dove soap. Mm. Um, and I also have. Epsom salt with lavender in it. They sell Epsom salt with lavender, and I put it in my jacuzzi and let the jets beat me. And that lavender and that sea salt with the Epsom salt makes my skin very clean. And as I'm clean, cleansing my outer part of my skin, you know, I'm thinking. I have my Bible. I have my um. I forget that that Bose um, system I have, but I connect my phone to it. Mm -hmm. um, I I let my Bose system read a book to me. Um, you know, journal for sure. When you get out, you got to have that um, time for yourself. That's why I often tell you ladies to please go out to the mall. Just walk the mall. Don't go buy yeah. anything. Yep. Walk the mall because you got the money don't mean spend it. You need to have that time for yourself. Um, 
I need y'all to hit these like buttons and Candy is going to post this on her page as well. Mm -hmm. Y'all go over there and hit the like button for her. Um, also, Lavender. I have, believe me, Monique keeps me invested <laughs> in Mila Eve essential oils. I'm telling you, I got, believe me, when I'm traveling, Monique gave me oil for my sinus. If I have a headache, she got a roller ball. I rub it on me. I rub it on my neck. That's why I told you guys last night, just pull, just massage your neck right there. You'll see that it does loosens endorphins and stress off of you. Mm -hmm. um, like Candy said, we all go through these things. We just got to learn how to come out of it quick and successfully. Mm -hmm. And everybody can't afford a therapist, but they got a lot of self-help um, things on Google mm -hmm. that will give you some ideas, and they're free. So, you know, that Dove soap, I really like that smell, you know, I, I, and, it, and it brings me out to happiness, you guys. So, you know, can't, yeah, you the yeah. lip in a diffuser. I like peppermint in a diffuser. And um, you know and you know what else I will say to think about? You also want to think about taking care of yourself holistically. So think about when was the last time did you drink water? Stay hydrated. And I mean like regular water, not some water mixed with this, that, and the third. Just some nice, crisp, good water. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Make sure you're drinking water. Are you eating your leafy greens? Um, are you getting um, clean protein and fiber? Are you moving your body? Take a dance class. Take a hip-hop class. Go yeah. for a walk in nature. Go for a run. Play a sport. Just Think about how can I take care of myself from a holistic level? And by holistically, I mean, how do I take care of my body? How, to, how do I take care of my mind? How do I take care of my spirit? All of your buckets do something to fill you up. Your mind, maybe it's reading. Your spirit, maybe it's listening to music or reading the Bible or talking to someone. Your body, maybe, maybe it's the movement and the drinking and what you're eating. So be mindful of how you're taking care of yourself. And I would also say meditation is huge. Meditation is huge. And you don't have to become a monk. No. Yeah. I'm not saying you go to India, become a monk, you shave your head, and you let go of worldly things. Absolutely not. By meditation, I just mean taking some intentional time to slow down, to focus on your breathing, to be conscious in the present moment so that you can get to a place where it's easier to hear your intuition. It's mm -hmm. easier to hear that Holy Spirit. It's easier to hear that inner guide because when your mind is always going, when you're disconnected from yourself, it's harder to know, you know, to hear your inner, your guidance. And then if you're not working on your self-esteem, when you hear that guidance, then you don't have the confidence to listen to it. What I mean by that is, say you're not working on your confidence, but you, but you can hear your guidance. So everything in your heart is saying, go left. That little voice is saying, go left. But the crowd, the man, your friends are all going right. Are you confident enough in who you are to listen to you? Are you confident enough to be the authority on yourself and listen to your voice and take the left? instead of following everybody else and taking the right, not wanting to push any buttons, not wanting to look dramatic or needy, not, you know, having that need to be liked by everybody and just being a yes person or a doormat that you abandon yourself to appease other people. So this That's work is so powerful. It gets you yeah. connected to yourself and then it gives you the confidence to listen to yourself because you talk yeah. about people who have been victims or things that have happened. What do they always say? I had a feeling not to do this. I had a feeling not to let him in. I had a feeling not to go to right. that party. I had a feeling not to walk down that alley or whatever it is. I had this weird feeling, yeah, but I wanted to be polite. To your, your intuition. Yes. Just one time, listen to it one time. It'll never steer you wrong because your body is telling you potential danger, potential danger, and you got to bring it down mm -hmm. and do. And I, I center myself, you guys. I go out in my yard. I sit on a towel on some of the hottest days in the afternoon after I have lunch, 
and I center myself and get that nice vitamin D on mm-hmm. me. You know, um, I, I like every time I come up here, honestly, I have no makeup on. I just have lipstick on. I mm-hmm. cleanse my face. I clean, and you guys, I do colonics. Ooh. I clean, I get myself cleaned out. I eat live food. Live food is salad. Um, I eat fresh salad and I do have a garden. Nisi, I tell you, we both have gardens and I eat my vegetables that I grow and I just make sure that I do talk loud to myself. I'm going to have a good day. When I know the meat I have, I'm going to walk out from that meeting with a headache. But before I go in there, I said, Lord, give me the words to say. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I'm talking to myself while I am urinating, y'all. Lord, (laughs) give me the right words to say. Washing my hands. I look in that mirror when I'm washing my hands and say, girl, go do that. Exactly. You got to keep pulling everything out of your fiber being that you are good enough. Mm-hmm. Your self-worth is good enough. And I wanted to say something to the person who said the comment, um, like the more he keeps me entertaining him, the longer I'll be in therapy. Well, that's not true because therapy is what I do for me. Mm-hmm. I don't do therapy for him. So therapy is something that I do for myself. To me, it's about self-discovery and it's about self-empowerment. It's about having someone who, ha- who A, is a professional in the space. It's like if I wanted to get in shape, I'd go to a, a personal trainer if I, mm-hmm. or a nutritionist, you know, or any, if, I, if I cracked my tooth, I would go to a dentist, right? So it's really just about getting someone with a professional background who has, who has education in this and they have the tools and the strategies and someone who's objective. They can see things about you that you can't see about you. So it's really just about self-discovery and empowering yourself with with tools to become the highest, most empowered version of yourself. And until you know yourself, you will never be the highest, most empowered version of yourself. That's why it says to thy own self be true. But, But you have to know who you are in order to be true to yourself. And Mm -hmm. therapy is a way to peel back the layers. Like, oh, this happened in my childhood. That's why I believe this. Oh, that's why I have this attachment style. That's why I have this communication style. Oh, that's why I attract guys like this. Oh, that's why I want to do this, right? Once you have the awareness and the knowledge and the tools to see yourself for who you fully are, then you have the power to mold yourself. Then you have the power to become the author of your own story. But if you don't know who you are, how are you going to become the most highest version of you if you don't know you? So I go to therapy for me. That is a part of my self-care kit. Mm -hmm. I mean, getting an hour a week, just to talk about what I want to talk about and self-discovery and get some tools to be happier, more joyful, smarter, more intelligent, uh, better communication skills. It's dope. And you got to find <laughs> really the right dope. therapist. You got to. The like, right one. Yes. Yes. My therapist will bounce things off of me as mm-hmm. hard as I bounce things off of her. Like yes. she'll say, well, Marcella, what could you have done? Mm. Tell me what could you have done there? You mm. know, you mm. smart. What what is the answer, Marcella? And then she <laughs> will elaborate on it. Yep. And that was the type of person I needed. I didn't want the person, and I had the person before that I go into. They sit there and they talk, and she said, mm-hmm, and just write down everything I said. <laughs> ah. No feedback. I needed me somebody. And Candy, I was just telling yes. them today, we choose hood people over good people exactly and we gotta change that yep yep and we have to get out of these um old antiquated mindsets that yes we have prayer and god in the bible but we can't just pray everything away god has given us all of these resources. He's given us the Bible. He's given us prayer, but he's also given us doctors and therapists and support people and all of these things. So we should use every resource available to us to live our best lives. 
You know, yeah. when we were like, oh, like we're gonna like live your best life. It's not just about flashy stuff, posting on Instagram, money, da 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 da. da. The truth is living your best life is when you get to that place where you are just so in love with you. Mm. That is what living your best life is. When you get that yumminess of loving yourself and being compassionate and showing yourself grace. Yes. And there's that is living your best me, life. Y'all. It's going to be people out there that will see you changing and be oh, yep. happy and they will throw a wrench right into it because yep. you're trying to move on from the old you, but they will try to pull you back to the old you and you got to be strong. That's where the self affirmations come in at. Mm-hmm. Tell yourself, I'm not going to get in this drama. I, I gave you an example today. They be trying to pull me in drama about that last page. And guess what? No, I, I won't entertain that. Because guess what? God has a different direction for me to go into. Like mm-hmm. I said, I'm a little holy, a little ratchet. We, But I want to help my sisters and brothers to become better people so we can talk to our children about our trauma so mm-hmm. that we can start mending our future generation. You know, all I see is, you know, they're letting everybody smoke weed now. Everybody can get high legally. That's good. <laughs> That's going to be some people's downfall. If they're not strong enough to say, I'm going to smoke this joint and go ahead on and do my job. Mm-hmm. But real job, people with good jobs, they want you drug tested. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, that's the work too. It's breaking generational curses. And yeah. the way you break a generational curse starts with you deciding to live your life differently than what you were taught or shown. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of a lot of low self-esteem, a lot of self a lot of um, self-limiting beliefs, the person who passed it to you may or may not have intentionally tried to pass it to you, but you can't give what you don't know. So they are just passing along what was passed along to them. That's why it's generational. That's why they say it runs in the family. Because it gets passed on and passed on. Alcoholism, drug abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Oh, it it runs in our family. His daddy did it. His daddy did it. Her mama did it. Her mama did it. Great grandmama did it. The way you break that curse is by working on yourself to be different. And And then teaching the next generation something new. Ladies, if you have sons. You need to talk to your sons. If you've been a product of physical abuse, you need to tell your children, please don't hit a woman. There's Uh no reason why you should. You need to move forward. You need to sometimes tell your girls the trauma that you endured as a young woman, as a teen. You know, I have a friend who actually got gang raped by some boys And then she said, oh, my God, my daughter's out there acting like a hoe. And I said, you know, you said that incorrectly. You need to sit down and tell her what happened to you as a child and tell her, I don't want that for you. And let's go through this together. And I said, and you need to start spending more time with her. She said, girl, when I get off work, I'm tired. But you being tired, she's being entertained by the street. Mm-hmm. You need to take your daughter somewhere. Sometimes, ladies, it could be a Dairy Queen. Take her to Dairy Queen. Take her to Popeye's Chicken. Sit down and uh, take her to McDonald's. Have a burger with her. Take her mm-hmm. to McDonald's for breakfast and sit down and say, I want to tell you something, baby. You know, when I was growing up, I was about 16. I was hanging out and this happened to me. Yep. And I'm telling you this because I don't want it. You know, nothing like this to ever happen to you. And I want to tell you what the things is to look for. I was drinking with my friends and they put something in a drink and I got drunk and passed out and they did this to me. And I didn't want to tell my mama or daddy because, you know, they would be ashamed of me because my mama told me to come in at eight, but I stayed out late. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened to me. And, you know, she told me that that 
that was her virginity they took. Mm. And guess what? She no longer wants to be with men because they hurt her. But yeah. I told her, you know, she, she doesn't want to be with women. She just don't want to be touched because of what yeah. happened. I said, you have to dig down and have the balls enough to go to a therapist. Yeah. You need to talk to somebody. You, you know, you are the R word. Yeah. And you need to tell your daughter. And, you know, we got our children today, you know, wearing these half shirts. I can understand if they go into a club when they're older. Mm -hmm. See the clothes that they're making for our children today, everybody. Half shirts, booty shorts. Come on now. For our 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, and 13-year-olds. We have to tell our kids, no, you can't wear that. Because I'm going to tell you, I never wanted to let my daughter wear that because she was big-breasted. No, baby. You need to wear a support <laughs> bra. And mm -hmm. you need to wear if anything. You'll wear a V-neck shirt. But it will not be nothing ripped, tore, hanging off your shoulder. You do all that when you get on your own. We got to start talking to our children because we can correct yeah. this. People feel that we can't. We can correct this, that we have grandchildren. You know, do things with your grandchildren. Like often, you know, my um, daughter told me one day, Mom, how come every time London asks you for something, you always got the money? When I was growing up, I would say, take me to McDonald's. You always would say, I don't have no money. <laughs> <laughs> But me and my granddaughter talk. We, I, I even tell my granddaughter, what about if you get a boyfriend who don't want you to be talking to your mom or me? And she said, no, that's not going to happen. Exactly. We, we talk to our family. And I can say it to her jokingly, but she knows that we, our family has a bond. So it mm -hmm. shouldn't be no reason a man could come in and isolate you. Because once they tell you, listen, I don't like your sister. I don't like your brother. The isolation starts with just those minor comments. I don't like that person. Mm -hmm. I don't like your friend. And all, all the while, when he don't like your friend, he really like your friend. He exactly. just all to separate. Exactly. We got to talk to our friends. We got to talk to, you know, sometimes you have these. We're, we're mature now. Sometimes we have these girlfriends. We know that. I'm going to tell you how you know if a girlfriend will talk about you. Okay. They will go to somebody else and talk. They will talk to you about somebody else that y'all are tight with, like the example you were given. Exactly. And then they will talk about you to the same person they yep. told you about. Yep. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. A thousand percent. That's why there's certain people that I'm surface friends with, but they won't be allowed in my home. Exactly. <laughs> and when I start dating someone seriously again, they're not going to be around him either. Right. <laughs> can't be trusted. Right. And, and that's the thing is that we have been programmed for years that we really can't go to our friends and say, you are wrong. I have tried to do that mm -hmm. in, in the last couple of months to say, listen, you're wrong. Fix it. And, you know, people don't want to hear that. They feel like I made a decision. It's my decision and you're not going to change it. We got to learn how to approach our sisters and brothers and say, look, baby, I, you know, yeah. I was talking about you and I'm sorry. And this is what I say. Exactly. It, it all boils down to not having healthy communication skills. When you think that every conversation that's not fluff is an argument, that's a sign that you don't know how to communicate. If you mm -hmm. can't have healthy conflict without it being an argument or a confrontation or a fight or gossip. That's a sign that you need to work on your communication skills. Yeah. But just like you said, that takes a lot of awareness and accountability and really checking our own egos at the yeah. door to stand up and say, hey, what I said was wrong. I take accountability for that. This is what I said. Let's see how we can fix this. That takes a very emotionally mature and present person to be able to do that. Yes, because y'all remember growing up, we grew up with Latanya, and Latanya was our friend for thirty something years. We, we, we women, today, I know Latanya. We women today, we don't have friendships like that anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't. 
is somewhere down the line after you graduated from high school, you went to college, you got a new set of friends, then you got those set of friends, and you never got a connection with another good, good girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you what Princess came to me and said one time, and this is the God honest truth. She said, you know, when we wasn't talking, she said, I thought you were saying some things, and I said some things about you, and I'm sorry. And, mm -hmm. and, and guess what? I said, it's all right. And guess what? Because I knew that if she's upset and she really don't really know what's going on, that she is going to talk about me. But I bet you this, the devil can't come in here and divide me and princess no more because Good. she has that attitude where she tells you how she feels. I have that attitude where I would tell you how I feel. And we just got to stop allowing men to come in between a bond with women. We yep. need a sisterhood. Because guess what, ladies? Y'all may not, these men may not want to hear it. But <laughs> we are stronger than them. We yes, are. we are. We yes, have we babies. Are. We work. We take care of the bills. We do everything. Boy, I, I used to say, my husband going to um, die looking younger than me because I am <laughs> the one who d do everything. I do everything because I want to make sure it's right. He said, mm -hmm. baby, I'll pay the bills next month, this, you know, this month. And I'll say, no, baby, I got it. I want to make sure everything's paid on time. I want to make sure every <laughs> I is dotted, every T is crossed. Yeah. We got to sometimes put down the power. Yes. Put down the power. Put down the need to control. Put down the need to be right. All of that stuff. Yeah. And I, and I also think when it comes to female uh, friendships, yes, of course, we don't want the men to get in there, but we also have to stop competing with each other. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, competition that goes on. Oh, did you see she did this? Who does she think she is? She posted that. Oh, da 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 da, da. It's just like, stop competing with everybody else. We yeah. are so much stronger when we collaborate. And truly I, and I genuinely. Yeah. I made a promise that mm -hmm. when I come on my page, I was going to make sure that I shout out everybody I watch because I, I want them to, I don't want them to ever feel like Marcella is in competition, but I will share, you know, yeah. all of us, we don't sit down and plan what we're going to talk about. They all talk about different. And at the end of the week, it seemed like everything they talked about that week is tied in together. And we has not, we have not talked about it. Yeah. And that's what I love. Like we got a squad, Candy Washington. Yes, Jersey we do. Squad. And if I see somebody new, I will holler back and say that person. Like the candy shop, I saw her and it was mm -hmm. very good. And people get you and her mixed up. They do? Yeah, <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, we, we decided to do, uh, the candy shop that was just based on the people in the live. I had no idea there was another candy shop because my yeah. name is candy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but I let everybody know on her page that you are candy Washington. Yes. Candy Washington. Followers yes. are candy canes. Exactly. Yeah. And I said, the candy shop can come to candy Washington and y'all could do something together. Cause y'all, I would love it. Beautiful, intelligent, intelligent woman. She got this big government job, but she she said to unwind, she comes on and do a blog. Just to yeah. unwind. It's and nice. Also, yeah, and so we gotta support small businesses, y'all. We mm -hmm. gotta stop making Michael Kors rich and you know Versace rich. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was one of those people, y'all. Listen, I promise to God, my hand and juice. I got about eighty thousand dollars worth of pocketbooks. Oh my God! And, and I look at that. Now, this was all of our over a course of time, right? Like, right. Like my my diaper bag for my son, who is thirty one years old, was a Gucci diaper bag. You know, the Goopy shopping bag. Yep. And I got that bag back then. It's all in good condition because you know. Then when, once I got older, I could say about 45, I was like, I got all these bags. I can't <laughs> use them all. Some of my bags were sitting in the back of my closet, actually got mold in the bag. And I oh, was no. how it's how much I spent in that bag. Right. So we can match some highs and lows and look good when we go out, but we don't have to keep chasing these name brands. I bet exactly. you. I'm going to tell you what I did, y'all, because I'm going to talk about a little financial class one day. Ooh. 
I used to, when I was in college, I told y'all the truth. I would go to the bank and take like a $10,000 loan. I would take every dime of that $10,000 loan and put it in the savings and would not touch it. And they told me, okay, you got um, 60 months to pay it back. It didn't take me 60 months because as I got paid, I started double paying it, double paying it. Then I would go back like two years later and take up $15,000 loan and put it over there where the 10 is at. Mm -hmm. And then I would write down that day, walking down New York, I would write down what I saw on um, Madison Avenue. I said, I saw these shoes, they're $160. When I got my paycheck, I would put that same $160 that I saw for those shoes over there in that savings account. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any, back in the day, y'all, Let me. we ain't had no cash cards. We had a checks. I, 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 I wouldn't get any checks. And when I was in college, I, I just started selling stuff, grilled cheese sandwiches. I was making people grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> with <an> iron. <laughs> <laughs> On the paper plate, I would put the bread, the cheese, the butter, you know, put butter on it and put my iron yeah. on it. But I didn't use the iron for clothes. I would get an electric skillet and make spaghetti. I always found a way to make some money. Because yeah. I knew that when I got out of college, I didn't want no debt. Right. I wanted money. I wanted to be able to be rolling. But as long as it took me to save that money, and I saved about, mm, I, I'm going to say I saved about $100,000 during my wow. college year. But I sacrificed. Some days I went to class with flip-flops on jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. And then this one professor told me I had to dress in a business class, told me I had to wear professional clothes. Yeah. And 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 I didn't want to do that because that meant I had to go buy something. Right. But I, I'm telling you, we got to be mindful of our money during these days and times. We yep. got to be mindful of who we have in our inner circle. Like, girls, mm -hmm. y'all need to start checking off the red flags that I have. Y'all go back and look at red flags and relationship on my page. Go back and see. Start evaluating that or if you're in a situation. Yep. You should never be the side chick because you never. should always be the main dish. Always. Always. And also, I think it's good to do inventory of all your relationships with certain red flags. Like we were talking about even friendships. If you have a circle of people who aren't going anywhere. They don't have any goals, no aspirations. You need to find a new circle of people. You need to be inspired by the people you hang out with. They should be able to either give you a vision of where you want to go or they can help you get to where you want to go. Yeah. But you should not be the most successful. You should not be the smartest. You should not be the most ambitious because then you're just going to cap off. You want to have a circle of people that inspire you and can take you places. And then you also want to make sure to let go of these frenemies, people who gossip, people who are always negative. Um, I used to have this one friend where she would just call me just to do a dump, just everything negative in her in her life, all the drama, all the men, blah, 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 blah. And like it was literally like she it would it would it didn't even matter. She was talking to me. She was just dumping. And then I and then energetically I would take that on until the point where I had to say no more. I'm not your emotional garbage can. Right. Because you have to be very, very cognizant of not just um, who you give your energy to, but whose energy do you receive? That is also very, very important. Your energy yeah. is important, but the energy you receive is also very important. You want to surround yourself by people who pour into you. When you're going through a hard time, they lift you up. When you're lifted up, they are happy for you. Not jealous, not fake happy, but genuinely happy for you. And the people yeah. that are genuinely happy for you are people who got their own stuff going on. Yeah. Because they don't have the time to be a hater when they love their own life because people only hate on you when they hate themselves. Absolutely. Let me tell you about some of the ladies going through divorce on our page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do not under no circumstance, let a man or woman beat you up on their way out the door. 
Oh, but hell no. What? I tell you, you ain't good enough. You wasn't good. I wish I didn't marry you. You ugly. Blah, blah, blah. If you have children from this man, you got to think this man is talking about you and you are the mother of his mm -hmm. children that he's not taking with him. You got to realize that you might think that you've given away the best years of your life, but the best day of your life is the new start. And you got to realize, look, ladies, I know that feeling hurts, but you got to not fall on your face because you got other people depending on you, especially if you have children. Mm -hmm. You have yourself. You got to keep going. I, I talked to a young lady that was so depressed that she didn't know what to do. You know what? I pointed her to an attorney, called him <laughs> up for her. We got that appointment. Not pointed her to an attorney. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. He, he was already gone. He already he was already gone, and and wasn't giving her anything. No food. No no nothing. And, and you've been his wife, so now it's time to make, like I said, the white people yep. make them take care of you. He didn't listen to your black mouth. He gonna mm -hmm. listen to the white folks. Yep, a hundred percent. And for people, and we talked about the this yesterday on the um, rejection show that we did. The mere fact that you still have life, that you are here, don't ever give up on you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what this no good person said about you. I don't care if you're, now you're a single mom. You, if you have breath, where there is life, there is hope and there is potentiality. Mm -hmm. So do, don't ever think your best time is behind you. Always yeah. know that your best time is ahead of you and be present in the moment and be grateful that you are here. Because there are some people who didn't wake up this morning. There are some people who yeah. are not here. Those are the people who really don't have another chance. Right. So no matter what you've been through, the fact that you are still breathing, the fact that you are still here means that there is still more for you to do, more yeah. for you to accomplish. So claim better days. Claim it's going to get better. There are some people who are rocking out in their 50s. And there's some people in their 20s miserable as hell. Age ain't nothing but a number. Right. Nothing but a number. There are some young people who are miserable AF, and there are some older people who are doing the damn thing. Yes. And I get up and I dance to a TikTok every day, y'all. Yes. And I don't show y'all every day my TikToks because sometimes I'm learning to dance. I'm learning the one where you know <laughs> you gotta do this right here, and then you gotta and then you gotta and then you know I'm I'm trying to learn. I'm, I I will watch those videos and I learn. I put them right on my big screen TV and I would dance like that in the shower. I would do because you know what? When we lay down, we our stress fall on us. But when we get mm -hmm. up, we got to work it out every Shoot day. Out. Like Candy said, moving parts. You just hold yeah. your arms up sometimes, just hold them up and you will feel. Feel that energy, that positive energy coming to your body. I'm a believer in that. You know, you got to mm -hmm. stretch. Listen, do you know, I'm going to tell y'all something about me. And don't laugh. Y'all been not got they going to laugh. <laughs> y'all ever heard of Fabalasso? Is, uh -uh. Who's heard of Fabalasso? Y'all yeah, it's like a cleaning product. In New York, oh. they call it money bless. You never heard of, nobody never heard of Fabalasso? Yes, the purple stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I have. Y'all, I don't want to tell y'all. No, tell us. I smell that every day. <laughs> I was. <laughs> You're high. You're high. You're getting high in your own supply. You know, I smell it <laughs> because it's made with lavender, right, y'all? I smell that. I, I got, listen, y'all, I got a big one. I got that ghetto big one, right? And I smell that. And sometimes, you guys, my husband hate it. I will put a little pot of that on the stove mm. and let the steam. Yep. And then I'm, I told y'all what I do for air fresheners for my car. I will take, I will go get some for Breeze. 
the little balls that you put in the um dryer. Mm-hmm. And I would go get those little sachet bags. And those sachet bags, they come like eight for um, 50 cents. <laughs> and I'll add some of those little Febreze inside of the bag and squeeze it. And I put it under my seats in my car. And I had that clean smell. Because I'm really like an OCD person, except in my room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A girl, if I took a picture of my closet, it would be terrible because I, I take down clothes to try it on and this and that. But I am really like a neat freak. Like when you walk into my house, my kitchen always have to be clean or I spaz out. Yeah. And I so that was some of the anxiety when I was going through a bad relationship. I would clean to make, you know, I would clean to get the dirty thoughts out of my mind of him using me. And, yeah. you know, that would make me start just cleaning. And that's my way that I release stress. Mm-hmm. And and I, I'm going to tell you guys the God honest truth. I used to, because I'm not claiming it now, I used to hang have an anger problem mm-hmm. so bad that, you know, when my boyfriend said it's over, I was the girl to walk behind him and punch him in his head. We no! Like, yes. In my 20s, I was, like, really crazy. Yeah. And, but once I got past my 20s, I got in my 30s, it was like, okay, bye. <laughs> exactly. All right, yeah, go. But let me open this door for you, bro. Mm-hmm. That's true. And and to that point, what I thought about when you're telling your story was to be so mindful of your self-talk. Mm. A really good exercise to do. It's just write down your thoughts throughout the day. What are you saying about yourself throughout the day? Are you saying, oh, I'm so stupid for being with him. I'm such an idiot. Everyone always uses me. You know, so like start thinking about what are you affirming throughout the day? Because affirmations aren't just positive. Affirmation Mm -hmm. is just means what what belief do you speak life into? Yeah, so you, you, can, you can do negative affirmations, right? Some people are yeah. like, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so fat. I'm so ugly. I never have any money. All of those are also affirmations. It's just what belief do you speak life into? So start mm-hmm. taking inventory. How do you talk about you? What are you saying to yourself? Write I'm it down. A, I'm going to give y'all a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Go over there and watch Nosy whole life. When Nosy get her some new shoes, she talks to them shoes. Um, I like these, these <laughs> white ones. Y'all see Nosy just walking the streets of New York, you know, right? Just up and down, taking pictures, flaunting. Yes, that makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. You look good, you feel good. And she always says, yes. And she, she nurse her hair. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of yourself. You got to, and you can't be stuck in the house. I know y'all stuck in there because of the um of the you know the pandemic. But yeah. y'all rent some movies. Watch them by yourself, girl. Yep. Go for a walk in nature yeah. so, like, while social distancing. Host a Zoom party, you know, almost like what we were doing. Get get with a good girlfriend and just talk and hang out. Have some type of social interaction and then also do something to fill yourself up. And if you and if you catch yourself having a lot of negative self-talk because what you believe about you is what will show up in your life. Yeah. Taking it back to relationships, what you believe about you is what your partner will mirror back to you. If you believe you're worthy of respect, your partner will show up in that way. If you obviously sometimes there's different hiccups, definitely sometimes you have to communicate. I'm not the one, you know what I mean? It's not a magical thing, but what you over, your overriding belief about you, everyone will conform and come into line with that. Think about it. You could be in a room. Think about any social situation. And somebody you don't know could walk into a room. The way they come in energetically, you already know how you can come at that person or not. You right. already know energetically the people you can mess with and the people you can't. And they don't, I, yet, they don't right. have to open their mouth, but you know how to come at these people. And abusers know that too. They exactly. know exactly. Wrap up. Now I'm gonna yep. tell you, I'm gonna use Princess as an example. Mm-hmm. I don't think no man could walk up and slap Princess. 
and oh, walk away. Hell no, I can skip the pizza. <laughs> I, I don't think that. But you know, we might know someone else who oh she's scared of her man. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Ooh, Cause mm-hmm. I can't wait to read this letter by Portia. Y'all know that Simon used to put um Fallon on punishment allegedly. What? That's some psycho stuff. Ain't no man putting me on punishment. Where she couldn't go nowhere. She was babysitting the kids. I got the seats now. Sunday. So basically, he, he, basically, he wiped her to become a nanny. Right. Wow. He, and if he does have this $40 million, y'all, he wouldn't give her no money. So sometimes people try to control you by, um, baby, I need money. And then they give you a little bit of money. This is all you should have. It's financial abuse. Yeah. It is. It all comes. It comes down to control. It's it's finance because there's so many different types of abuse: mental, emotional, physical, and definitely financial. If someone controls how much money you can and cannot have access to, is financial abuse, and it's a way to manipulate and control. Because I heard on the streets of ATL, Mm -hmm. he put that house up for sale because he had to liquefy some of his money, like. A, I, I can say that I'm worth, this is hypothetical people, right. don't cut me, not my door down. I can say I'm worth $5 million, but I only actually have $1.5 million in the bank. But the $5 million is counting all my properties, yep. all my cars, yep. all my bonds, all my, you know, everything that I got in, in my, um, a you know, cop, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's, so they're saying that he don't have this money. He had to liquidate some of this money by selling that house that he actually owned in Atlanta. Yep. Because well, didn't he only buy it to film in? No, he's had that house since 2011. Oh. But ah. see, if you look at the decor of the house, he would never allow her to feminize the house. It, everything looked masculine. Oh, hell no. And so... You know, I'm just, I'm begging Portia, Lord have mercy, um, to please get to the altar and run back the other way. That would be good <laughs> rating. Everything, everything in this man that he is very controlling. Yeah. And, you know, Cordell looks like a person who was also controlling her. Yeah. So, you know, Portia came out from her marriage to say, you know, I, 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 I like men, I like women, I like everybody. You know, she was just confused. And that's why she keeps attracting these. Instead of good men, she's attracting Mm -hmm. hood men. Exactly. And that's a, a, Portia is a prime example of someone not doing the actual work. And Mm -hmm. she's a prime example of someone going to couples therapy or therapy that is performative rather than transformative. Like, I think she's the type of person who goes to couple therapy or therapy to work on the relationship from an outside perspective. Like it's his fault. He's doing this from a victim mentality rather than going to therapy from a, I want to take accountability for my life. Why do I keep getting in these, into these relationships? Why do I keep repeating these same toxic patterns? What is it about me that I need to change in order to live a better life for myself? Because if you think about it, she went from Cordell Remember when she had, and this is so cringy. What's his name? Duke? What was his name? She threw the um, trophy bay party for that man. He was like an NFL player. She yeah. threw a party for him, talking about this what is my trophy. <sighs> what half the heck? naked and all. Half naked and all. Half naked and all. You that that is just so backwards to me. And then when she tried to do the baby nup with that with the cute Todd. She tried to do a baby enough with and him. This guy was somebody she should have invested in, but she, you exactly. know what it was? He was a good man to have a seed. Yeah. But, but but guess what, you guys? He was too nice for her. She mm. wanted somebody rouchy and ratchy. And you see what the hot dog king did. Ooh. And then Dennis just, I mean, I don't like to talk about anybody looks, but just come on now. So then she goes to the hot dog man who free willingly tosses her to his homie, Simon. I mean, passed her around. Let's just call a spade a spade. It's it's just so sad. And it, and it's, it's particularly sad when 
it's a woman who is Portia plays wacky, but I I, I actually think she's smart. I don't think she's yeah, stupid. I think she's smart. She's strategic. She is talented. You know, yeah, she does yeah. have a talent. She has this nation. She's a beautiful girl. Yeah. And, and I have a Christian background. And a Christian y'all, background. Y'all Google Portia. Portia did a whole sermon in a pool pit. Google her. Yes. Miss Diane's supposed to be a pastor. Miss Diane is oh, probably yeah. over there casting out demons. So <laughs> her do not get married. <laughs> not casting out demons. Because, she better start at home. <laughs> you know, oh my God. Oh, you said Duke wasn't her real man. Duke has a man. Really? Oh, Fallon oh. doesn't have no taste. Regardless, he married her and moved her into his home, and he wouldn't allow her to buy furniture or nothing. He made that house manly. Y'all see what more, they, that's like a prison. That's like a prison, yeah. not a home. Right, y'all. We got to watch who we with. Y'all don't want to get with a man that I got a girlfriend because y'all got a lot of girlfriends. I got a girlfriend <laughs> that had she owned her home, paid in full. Mm-hmm. And she had a man come in and say, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. And my girlfriend was the type of woman who was like, but what did you buy to be liking? And she would say, get the hell out of here. She ah! was just, yes. She did not play. And I told her, girl, you ain't gonna never get married. You scare everybody you with. You start off real nice, like, hello, everybody. And then soon as he said, well, where you working at? Look, you ain't here for that. I'll be like, uh, uh, man. It's ridiculous. Yo. That's the thing. If you find yourself dating the same person, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> It's you. Yeah, that's true. If you got a arguing, fuss, and fight with your last relationship, and you arguing, fuss, and fight, fight now, with this one, yep. Now, do anybody in the chat want to come up and uh, talk to, and ask Candy a question or me a question? Yeah. Nisi, drop the link. I'll be right back. I'm gonna give me some water. Okay. Nisi, I'll drop the link. That's right, you guys. As Marcel is getting a drink, let's be sure to get those likes up. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. You can join the gyms. Hit that join button as well for our girl Marcella. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, anybody who wants to come on up and talk to us. Oh, and another thing I'll say about um, self-care and self-love is that, and, Mar- and Marcella uh, touched on this, when you start to heal, when you start to get healthy, when you start to get strong, when you start to love and respect yourself and stand in your power and truth, be prepared to piss people off because there will be people who benefited from you not having boundaries not having standards, always being a yes person, being a doormat, being overexerted all the time. They benefited from you not having any boundaries or standards. So when you start pushing back, when you start saying no, when you start standing up for yourself, there will be people, family, friends, loved ones, even coworkers who might be like, oh, you act in brand new, you act in this or that. They will adjust or they will fall away. But don't let it stop you from your journey. Just be prepared for that. Everyone won't initially celebrate the new you, but you keep celebrating the new you. Stay on your journey, but be prepared for some people not to accept that straight away. But the people who are for you will come around. And the people who aren't for you, sometimes you just got to cut those people. But if someone doesn't want to be in your life because you are loving yourself and you're taking care of yourself and you're implementing healthy boundaries, then that, that then that person doesn't deserve you your joy. And you're taking care of yourself and you're implementing. Miss Lucas, I need you to turn off all your um, electronics because you're causing a echo. So are you ready? 
turn off all okay. your um, electronics because you're causing a echo. So are you ready? Is it? Off all is your, there um, echoing? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Even my television? Echo. Yes. So okay. No. Oh, yeah, my television. Yeah. yeah, this is my television. Oh, my television. Okay. Yes. Oh, right. No. Oh, yeah, my television. Yeah, this is my television. Okay. Okay, Miss Lucas, let me know when you get ready. Um, mm -hmm. just unmute yourself. You guys, we gotta cleanse ourselves. I'm telling y'all. I go in my backyard and scream. I'm so glad my neighbors don't live near me so they can't hear me. But I <laughs> just to get out my frustrations because we all get frustration with day-to-day -day life. I hate grocery shopping. I hate doing things that I have to do. But I try to get that frustration out before I lay down at, at night. Are right, you ready, Miss um, Lucas? Let's see. I think right. so. Okay. Let me ask your question tonight. Lay down at, at night. Are um, you ready, Miss um, Lucas? We'll Let's try. See. I think so. If not, okay. I'll just try it again. Are you ready, Miss Lucas? We'll try. It keeps so. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just turn everything off, Miss Lucas. Mm -hmm. Just turn it all off. Turn out. She went out. She'll call me because I gave her my phone number. She'll call me if she needed. Um, mm -hmm. She has that country swing like me. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's very country. So is there, before we close out tonight, is there any questions I'd like to let y'all know to please um, subscribe to Candy Washington's page. Aww. You can be a gem, a candy can, the royal family, the tribe. Mm -hmm. You can be princess, you know, princess family. You can be anybody you want, you guys. This table is big enough. We yes. don't have to be selfish about it. Um, just please uh, let us know um, what you want to talk about. Let me know in the chat what you want to talk about because I'm going to be jumping on. Um, I'm waiting for Real Housewives of Atlanta. They're going to start filming yes. very soon. And um, y'all give me some suggestions in here. I want y'all to please like and subscribe. Hold on. I do Candy, I have a question for you. Hi. Um, when do you know it is your intuition and not your insecurity? When for me, I know it's my intuition versus insecurity when it's coming from a place of love and not from a place of fear. Okay. So if I if it's coming from a place of fear like fear of not being good enough, fear of being rejected, fear of failure, fear of not having my needs or wants met, fears of hearing no, any of that. If it's rooted in a fear, then that's usually an insecurity. And I would also say your intuition, it's a calmness about it. Mm -hmm. It's not this sort of like, anxious oh should i should i not oh it, it's not that anxious insecurity when it comes from your intuition when it comes from the holy spirit when it comes from your gut it's just a calmness it's a knowingness like the, like i am being guided it's a it, there's a calmness to it and it's rooted in a love and it's rooted in something that is there to protect you versus when you're getting something that's rooted in your insecurity it's usually anxious and it's usually fear based. And yes, y'all, Candy Washington does show her face. Yes, what? I do. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I have to get ready for tonight. So I didn't want to scare you guys, but yes. <laughs> I do show my face on my channel. Yes. And, and this is Nisi, and this is a real picture of me, not an avatar. Yes. And Nisi is my manager and she does show her face. Yes. <laughs> so you guys, um, y'all tune in. Y'all be looking for me to post something tomorrow. I'm going to see what we can get into. We got to make it fun because we've been doing some serious stuff. Y'all don't forget Miss Missy is coming on. Okay, Joanna wants to come on. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, Joanna. Hi. How you doing? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can hear me. This is my first time ever doing a call-in. Yeah, well, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you. it's your turn. Okay, Joanna wants to come on.
Okay. Yes, I was just hey, one. I was wanting to speak Hi. in regards to How are you doing? relationships. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you can hear me. This is my first time ever doing a call in. Well, welcome. Thank you. Miss Joanna, do you have a I was just one. I was something else in regards to How are you doing? relationships? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What I was wanting to speak on was I was when I was thirty six years old. I'm fifty five now. Miss Joanna, do you have a? I I was married. I think I'm echoing. Yes, you got to cut something off that you got on electronic. Okay. What I was wanting to speak on was I was when I was thirty six years old. I'm fifty five now. things out they have to close everything you guys yeah. when you come on only have stream yard open that's it nothing else just stream yard yeah so so um miss joanna please hit me in my instagram um and then i can bring up what you wanted to talk about i can revisit it tomorrow um i want to hear what you have to say but Please come on my Instagram, Marcella Speaks. Go in my inbox, and it would be perfectly private. And I do not share what people tell me when they come to me privately. I answer them privately, and um, I keep everything confidential and because I want people to come out and tell their own story. So, you guys, I'm checking out, and I'm getting ready to go over and see what people in my family is open. Marcella, can we speak about black women and fertilization issues? Yes. Let me tell y'all something about me. This is no lie. I've been pregnant 11 times where I've lost. 11? Mm-hmm. Oh, baby. But I, it's because I was having fertility problems. Mm -hmm. And I discovered at 22 years old, I, was, I, I had diabetes. Mm. And I have her lost babies too, you know, through my domestic violence case. I've lo lost the baby that my mom kicked out of my stomach. She kicked oh. my stomach in. So, yes, we can talk about that. Um, um, anything y'all want to talk about? Oh, Kim Pyre sent you. Yes, Kim Pyre was a person who helped me get my story out. Because I didn't know, you know, first when we were going through that stuff, I was going to mm -hmm. let everything die out. And then I decided that I needed to speak. And I wanted to go to somebody that I know that can help me tell my truth. And then I went over one night and I was listening to Candy Washington. <laughs> and I admire what she said. She was saying when we were wrong, when we were right. Mm-hmm. And, and she analyzed everything. She just didn't go with everything at face value. And she was actually hitting the targets. And so I called somebody and said, I want to talk to that girl, Candy Washington. <laughs> and, they, and they said, well, you know, she's in California. I said, do you know anybody out there that, connect, that can connect me? And they called me back and gave me her phone number. <laughs> <laughs> And we started speaking, and I have yeah. developed some good um, YouTube relationships. So yeah. we we got some people out here that are still fighting on YouTube, and I just choose not to tune in and let that be in my spirit. My goal was to help people, and that's what I'm going to stay on that with. And you know, whether people stay with me or not, I'm I'm going to do. If I tell one person help one person, I didn't help a lot. Well, you've already helped me, so you've already done it. Check. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys, I will be tuning in tomorrow to come and see y'all. Please hit those like buttons. And you go to visit someone else's house, the, the candy shop. You go over with the candy canes, the tribe, 
Kempire. Hit those likes, you guys. That's free, and that lets us know that people are viewing, they're watching, and they appreciate. Y'all have a great night. Good night, Candy. Thank you for being the guest on my show. And you can stream this all on your show, Candy. I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Thank you, Marcella. I appreciate you. you. Keep shining and stay true to your authentic self. You yes. are unique and you are beautiful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night, Gems. I love you all and thank y'all for the prayers. My husband. I hope he comes home tomorrow, and I will keep y'all updated on my husband. They knocked him out. They gave him a little fentanyl so he can sleep. <laughs> but he's out. So I love you guys. Good night.